Namaste everyone. So in today's video, let us see what do you mean by solenoid. So solenoid is a device and it is used to generate magnetic field. So solenoid is a device which is used to generate magnetic field. So here we have a long wire, solenoid is nothing but a long wire and this wire is wound in the form of helix. So the wire is wound in the form of helix. So the same wire is wound in the form of helix and here we have number of turns, n number of turns in a solenoid. So this is one turn, this is the second one, this is the third one, so fourth one. Like this we have n number of turns in a solenoid. So each turn is considered as a circular loop. Okay? So there are n number of turns and the n number of turns are closely spaced, they are closely packed and each turn is considered as a loop or each turn is considered as a circular loop. So when it is connected to the external circuit, when it is connected to the external circuit, the current flows through the coil. We know that the source of the magnetic field is moving charges or the electric current. As current flows through the coil around the space, magnetic field is generated. So the same diagram can also be drawn like this. So the solenoid, this is the turns. You just imagine that there are n number of turns in a solenoid. So this is nothing but the turns. So which is wound in the form of helix. The current through this or I is flowing in this direction. So this is the direction of current flowing through the solenoid. So there are n number of turns and I is the current flowing through the solenoid and it is flowing in this direction. So in downward direction current is flowing. We know that according to right hand clasp rule, if this is the direction of current then curled fingers give the direction of magnetic field. If thumb gives the direction of current, if the current through the conductor is like this, if current is flowing like this, then the magnetic field lines are like this. If the current is like this, then the magnetic field lines are like this. Here the current is flowing in this direction, so in downward direction, right? So the magnetic field lines are like this. Around the conductor we have magnetic field lines and they are like this because the current is flowing in this direction. So you just imagine that this is a circular loop. So this is a circular loop. Solenoid means here, here we have n number of loops or which are closely packed. Okay. So this is a one circular loop and in this loop current is flowing in this direction. So this is the direction of current. So at this point if you observe this loop from here, if you observe the circular loop from here then you will notice that at this point the current is flowing like this. right? So this is the direction of current. At this point the current flows like this and at this point the current is flowing like this. So here the electric field is represented by dot. 
because it is out of the plane. At this point electric field lines are um, represented by cross because they are into the plane, they are going into the plane therefore it, uh, electric field lines are represented by cross. At this point it is coming out of the plane so they are represented by a dot. Okay? So, this is for one circular loop. But here in case of solenoid we have so many loops. So, the current is flowing through the solenoid and the direction of current is like this downward direction. So, the magnetic field lines are like this. So, around this current carrying conductor we have magnetic field lines circular loops and the direction is like this. Using right hand clasp rule we can find the direction of magnetic field and current. So, at this point consider this point here the magnetic field lines are like this right. So, always the magnetic field lines form closed loop here also we have magnetic field lines and they are like this. So, here we have magnetic field here also we have magnetic field ok. So, this is current. So, the magnetic field lines are like this that means at this point the direction of magnetic field is like this right. So, this is magnetic field here also like this we have magnetic field lines. So, this is magnetic field in order to get the direction you have to draw one tangent. So, at this point the direction of magnetic field is like this. So, at this point direction of magnetic field is downwards. So, for this turn for this loop again current is in this direction right. So, current is like this. So, the magnetic field lines are like this. So, like this we have magnetic field lines. So, this is the direction and here this is the direction. So, like this we have magnetic field lines around the space of the conductor. So, here so at this point so that means at this point the current is like this like this we have current. So, the magnetic field lines so this is the direction of current. So, the magnetic field lines are like this at this point So, the current flowing through this conductor at this point the current flows like this. So, this is the direction of current right. So, thumb gives the direction of current. So, this gives current and all other fingers gives the direction of magnetic field. So, at this point so this is current and the magnetic field lines are like this. So, this is the magnetic field. Okay. The next magnetic field line, the third line overlaps with the magnetic field line of the neighboring turn. Right? So, here, here we have magnetic field lines like this. So, all the magnetic field lines overlap with each other. So, we can apply the principle of superposition. That means, the net magnetic field is the vector sum of all the magnetic fields or the net magnetic field is a vector sum of magnetic field due to individual coil. 
right so that is represented as so the vector sum of the magnetic field lines can be represented like this so on adding all the field lines we get a magnetic field like this so this is the vector sum of all the field lines and the next one is like this so this represents the vector sum of the magnetic field lines here also the next magnetic field line overlaps with the neighboring field lines therefore the total magnetic field b is the vector sum of magnetic field due to the individual coil so the vector sum of all the magnetic field lines can be shown like this so this is the vector sum what is the direction so this is the direction and here this is the direction here this is the direction here this is the direction okay now the next magnetic field lines they also overlap with each other and they form field lines like this so like this we have magnetic field lines so the direction is like this so this is inside the solenoid so this represents the inside view of the solenoid this is inside the solenoid this is the surface of the solenoid and this is nothing but the space or outside the solenoid as we go away from this surface the magnetic field lines or strength of the magnetic field decreases right as we move away from the surface strength of the magnetic field decreases so magnetic field strength is maximum at the center because all the field lines are parallel to each other right so the field lines are parallel to each other therefore inside the solenoid field strength is maximum so outside the solenoid magnetic field is very weak or we can say that at this point or at this point magnetic field b is equal to 0 as we move away from the surface strength of the magnetic field decreases so at some point q the magnetic field b is equal to 0 here also at some point b is equal to 0 now let us see at the surface what is the strength of the magnetic field okay so at the surface so consider these two field lines so here the direction of magnetic field is downwards this is the direction of magnetic field so here this is the direction of magnetic field magnitude of magnetic field is same directions are opposite so these two cancel with each other here also we have the magnetic field direction of magnetic field is like this here the direction is like this these two cancel with each other so at the surface the magnetic field due to the neighboring turns cancel each other or the magnetic field vanishes at the surface here also this is the direction of magnetic field here this is the direction of magnetic field so these two are the neighbors therefore the magnetic field cancel each other so here this is the direction this is the direction these two cancel with each other so at the surface magnetic field due to the neighboring turns vanishes right so b is equal to 0 so the net b becomes equal to 0 so at the surface outside the surface b is equal to 0 because magnetic field is very weak only inside the solenoid we have the strong magnetic field because all the magnetic field lines are parallel to each other now let us calculate what is the expression or let us find out what is the expression for strength of the magnetic field 
inside the solenoid. So, what is the expression for magnetic field inside the solenoid? For that, we have to use Ampere's circuital law. Using Ampere's circuital law, let us derive an expression for magnetic field inside the solenoid. Okay. So, this is the solenoid and let us consider a point P inside the solenoid. So, inside the solenoid we have a point P. Okay. So, Q is a point which is outside the solenoid. So, we know that outside the solenoid magnetic field B is 0. On the surface, the magnetic field due to the neighboring turns cancel with each other. So, B vanishes. So, we have the magnetic field only inside the solenoid. Now, consider a solenoid having n number of turns or small letter n number of turns per unit length. So, there are n number of turns in a solenoid. So, small letter n is the number of turns per unit length. Okay. So, in one unit length there are n number of turns. So, in order to find out the magnetic field inside the solenoid what we have to do? We have to use Ampere's circuital law. So, for that you have to consider one closed curve. So, I will consider a closed curve here. So, closed curve means it may be a square or it may be a rectangle or it may be a circle. So, all are closed. So, you can consider any of them. So, here I will consider a rectangle. So, this is also closed. So, I will consider a closed curve. According to Ampere circuital law, the closed line integral b vector dot dl vector should be is equal to mu naught into i dot product of b vector and dl vector closed line integral of b vector dot dl vector must be is equal to mu naught into i where mu naught is the permeability and i is the current enclosed in the within the curve that means, the current carrying conductor should be inside the Amperean loop. So, now this is the loop, the current is flowing in this conductor. So, here the current is flowing. So, due to the flow of current we have magnetic field lines, right. So, I will name this Amperean loop as A, B, C, D. So, this is D L. So, so A B, so this length is A B or I will denote this length as H. So, A B is nothing but H. Okay. So, this H is made up of number of line elements. So, we can divide this A B into number of line elements. On adding all the line elements, we get the total length which is nothing but h. right? So, this is h that means this is also h. Here also we have so many line elements. On adding all the line elements or on integrating all the line elements, we get the total length which is nothing but h. Okay? So, using Ampere's circuital law, the closed line integral B vector dot dl vector is equal to closed line integral 
So, the closed line integral is A B C D A. So, A B C D A is the closed path. So, this can also be written as A B C D A or the closed line integral A B C D A can also be written as the line integral A B plus line integral B C plus line integral C D plus line integral A into D. So, the line integral from A to B, B vector dot D L vector plus from B to C, B vector dot D L vector plus C to D, B vector dot D L vector plus line integral d to a b vector dot d l vector right. So, this is equal to this one is equal to b vector dot d l vector or this is nothing but b d l cos theta b d l cos theta from a to b. From a to b we are dividing this whole length h into number of line elements. Let d l be the length of one line element. So, here we are considering d l as vector quantity. So, this is the direction of d l. So, inside the solenoid, so a b is inside the solenoid. So, inside the solenoid, this is the direction of magnetic field. So, the magnetic field lines are like this. The direction of magnetic field is like this the magnetic field and the d l both are in the same direction therefore, angle between b vector and d l vector theta is equal to 0 right. So, for a b angle between d l vector and b vector theta is equal to 0. So, from a to b b d l cos theta b d l theta is 0 cos 0 is equal to 1 plus for the second line integral B C for this, this is the line element D L, the whole length is divided into number of line elements. So, this is the direction of line element, right. What is the direction of or this is the direction of D L, D L. So, this is the direction of magnetic field. So, this is the direction of magnetic field and this is the direction of line element d l. So, angle between them theta is equal to 90 degree, they are perpendicular to each other. So, cos 90 is equal to 0. So, the second term becomes equal to 0. So, this is 0 because cos 90 is 0. Third one line integral of C d. So, this line lies outside the solenoid. So, we know that outside the solenoid magnetic field B is equal to 0. So, B is equal to 0 therefore, this whole term becomes equal to 0. Now, sorry this is the third one from C to D. So, this is equal to 0 plus last one from D to A from here to here. So, this is the direction of D L the uh, direction of magnetic field is like this again they are perpendicular to each other theta is equal to 90 cos 90 is 0. So, third term is also is equal to 0. So, we get from A to B, B into D L is equal to closed line integral A B C D A of B vector dot D L vector. So, this is nothing but line integral a to b into b d l. So, this is the expression. So, this is equal to mu naught into i. So, from Ampere circuit law we know that b d l integration of b d l from a to b is nothing but mu naught into i. What is i? i is the current enclosed in the loop. So, for that
let i be the current flowing through one circular loop or i is a current flowing through one turn how many turns are there we know that in one unit length in one unit length there are n number of turns so n is nothing but the number of turns per unit length in one unit length there are n number of turns then how many turns are there in length h so in length h the number of turns is equal to that means we have n into h number of turns right in one unit length we have n number of turns therefore in h length we have n into h number of turns so the number of turns in length h here h is nothing but the length is n into h right so h is this one that means in total length h there are n into h number of turns so total number of turns in length h is n into h i is the current flowing through one turn then what is the current flowing through n h number of turns i into n h so the current flowing through nh turns is i n into h right so the total current is i n into h because in one turn i is the current flowing in nh turns what is the current flowing so cross multiplication i into n h so this is the current flowing through the nh turns so using ampere circuit law from a to b bdl is equal to mu not into i because the closed line integral of b vector dot dl vector is nothing but line integral bdl from a to b which is equal to mu not into i so is equal to mu not into i is nothing but i n into h okay i n into h i is a current so from a to b here b is the magnitude of magnetic field it is constant so i will write b here integration of dl is equal to mu not i n into h so dl is the line element so on integrating all the line elements together we get the total length h so integration of dl is nothing but h so b into h is equal to mu not i n into h so h h cancels so b is equal to mu not n into i so this is the expression for magnetic field inside the solenoid so this is the strength of the magnetic field inside the solenoid so b is equal to mu not it is a permeability of free space n is the number of turns per unit length n by l capital letter n by l is n i is the current so b is equal to mu not n into i or the statement of solenoid is like this
So, solenoid is a device used to generate magnetic field. So, this is the definition. So, it is a long wire which is wound in the form of helix. So, it is a long wire which is wound in the form of helix. So, this is the definition and what is the expression for magnetic field inside the solenoid? So, the magnetic field inside the solenoid B is equal to mu naught n into i where B is the strength of the magnetic field mu naught is the permeability of free space n is the number of turns per unit length number of turns per unit length and i is the current flowing through the solenoid through the solenoid. So, this derivation is not there for the exam only definition and the expression for magnetic field inside the solenoid. So, this this is important take down. <coughs>